whooping I tell you that. Amen. Well, we're just so grateful to the Lord and to all of you that are here in this noonday Bible study today. I, I feel good in my body. I didn't feel so good last night. I can tell y'all this. Are, are we on now? Oh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I laid up there. I got home yesterday and had nice dinner. And I was still hungry. So I went. And I didn't want to eat too much. You know, at 6 o'clock, you ain't supposed to eat a whole lot. You know, heavy food. So I laid down, took my shower, and I laid down, and I still wanted something to eat. So I went in the kitchen and got me some cheese at it, and some of them little goldfish. Russell, you goldfish. Ate them things, they kept me woke all night last night. <laughs> I didn't sleep well. I was tossing and turning all night long. But I'm here today. I'm here today, and I thank God I'm feeling much better. I'm feeling Amen. much better. Now, I won't do that again. Believe me, I won't do that again. <laughs> you learn. Amen. Amen. Uh, we greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're listening to Pastor Levi Adam, the noonday Bible State on Tuesday uh, afternoon. Tuesday afternoon, noonday Bible study. And we're coming to you from Lighthouse Apostolic Faith Church right here in the Chatham community in Chicago, Illinois. And we are so grateful to you that are out here in the sanctuary today and even those that are listening by Facebook Live and also YouTube. Amen. We thank you. We're grateful for you. And we're praying for you and we ask you to pray for us. We're remembering the Miller family and the loss of their their brother and 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 uh, also we're remembering uh, Evangelist Stoke and the loss of her son and those that are in Arkansas uh, the McBride family and the uh, Brown family and there's others that I'm quite sure uh, I'm not familiar with uh, right now they escape my mind but we are praying for you. We are praying for our nation uh, that God will intercede in whatever situation you find yourself in. God is a deliverer. God is a way maker. Amen. God is a bridge over troubled water. Amen. God will fill that gap that nobody else can fill. Amen. Only God can do it. And I want you to know that. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he will direct your path. That's the kind of God that we serve. All right. Uh, uh, we're going to go into our, our lesson today, our class today, and we're going to go back. I, I, I just want to keep working with this, this uh covetousness, walking in God's commandment. Because the reason why I'm staying on that because I want God's people to get everything that God has for us. Amen. And the only way we're going to be able to get that is we got to know what God wants us to do. We got to know what God's commandment is. We got to know what God's requirement of us. If we don't know what God requires you, we, 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 we are ignorant of, of how to walk with him. Glory. And, and, and we're children of the light. We're not the ignorant children. Amen. We got to know what God is saying. If we want God's blessing, we got to do what he said. Yes. And that this is one thing I want uh, the saints, those that are listening, those that are the sound of my voice, I want us to get this. I want us to get it. And, and once we get it, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you're going to still have problems, but God will be there with you. God will help you through it. Right. And, 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 and by walking in his commandments, 
uh, uh, these things that others are struggling to get, you will get them. You will have God said that. God said that I will be your God and you shall be my people. And there's no shortage in God's kingdom. There's no shortage in God's kingdom. And when we learn this, and walk according to it. You talking about having peace of mind? Get to know who God is. And get to know when things start happening to us. We can say God know about it. He knows what I'm going through. He's going to help me through it. He will help you. Amen. Because the Lord is, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, <laughs> Listen to what David said. The Lord, Lord. is my shepherd. Yes. And a shepherd, a good shepherd, mm -hmm. he protects his sheep. Mm -hmm. He protects his sheep. They don't have to worry when they go out in the pasture. They don't have to worry about the lion and the bear and, and the, the beast of the, the wilderness coming and attacking them because the shepherd is there keeping watch over them. Right, that's right. As his rod and his staff, mm. he's keeping. That's why he said, the Lord, mm. we, that's what we ought to be saying. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. And as long as God is my shepherd, I shall mm. not want. Yeah. <laughs> Get that. That's right. As long as he's my shepherd, I shall not want. That's peace right there. That is. That's peace. That's divine peace. I shall not want. Everybody else is walking around me nervous and about to lose their cool. They, 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 they don't know what's up. And you 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 you, you don't worry about a thing. <laughs> <laughs> anything you worry about and you all really worry about the anything you ought to be concerned about is God am I walking according to your will that's my concern that's my worry I want to please you alright let's go to the book of Jeremiah and I believe that was the Melissa Wilson would be our reader for the day and the book of Jeremiah, and uh, uh, I believe we was in the what, 10th, 11th verse? The le I mean, the 11th chapter of Jeremiah. And this is, this is dealing with the nation of Judah. She had broken the covenant with God. She had broken the covenant with God. Long as she was walking in God's commandment, yes. they was doing fine. But for some reason, whether it be the desires of mankind, of the enemy, they was tricked into turning away from the God of the universe. The God that delivered them out of sin. Egypt was a type of sin, bondage. Mm -hmm. And he delivered them out of Egypt, out of bondage, and gave them a land that flowed with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Glory. Yes, he did. And he said, you don't even have to go in, and you don't have to go in with, although when they left Egypt, they was rich. Yes, they, were. they was rich. But they didn't have to go in and spend their money buying land. God said, I'm going to give this to you. Mm -hmm. All I ask you to do is walk in my commandments. Walk in my covenant. Keep the laws of Moses. Keep that law that was uh, 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 God has given at that period of time. Israel. They forsook their God to go after idols. Let us go uh, uh, into our 
blessing. Verse, what you said verse before we stop there? Verse 17, it says, For the Lord of hosts that planted thee have pronounced evil against thee, for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense unto Baal. God says, you really messed up. The northern kingdom of Samaria, the southern kingdom of Judah, you have blown it. You have turned, and God said, because of you turned and went the way of the heathen, worshiping idols, evil going to come up on you. I told you before you went into the land, don't you worship idols. Because if you go and serve other gods, this land going to spew you out. Because this land, Lord have mercy, Glory. this land that I'm giving you, it, 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 because of you there, and because I'm giving it to you, it's a holy land. I give this to you. He told Moses, pull off your shoes. Amen. Where you standing, this is holy ground. God said, I, 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 I made this a holy, this sinful place where the Canaanites and the Hussites and the Hittites and all them that, they was in that land, it was a sinful land, but God said, I'm going to kick, I'm putting them out, and now this land is a holy land. I'm putting my name there. I put you there. You are my children. You are my nation. And you are to represent holiness. Amen. You bring some foreign god in this land, this land going to gurgitate you out. It's going to spew you out. Because you done brought in a porn. You done brought in evil. You done brought in wickedness. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee has pronounced evil against thee. For the evil of the house of Israel and the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves, you blew it. Or chapter 11, chapter 11, verse 17 of Jeremiah. He said, you blew it. You blew it. You messed up. You violated my covenant. You violated my law. And I tell you this, I say this to all of us. Anytime you and I commit a sin, that is a discipline for commit sin. The Bible said every sin can the what? Recompense of reward. Just and recompense of what? If God doesn't judge sin, God is not God. All right. Say that. Say it. God is holy. Yes, and is. sin has to be judged. Mm -hmm. And Israel went and defiled themselves. They have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offer incense to Baal. You done went out there and cut down a tree and took the stock of the tree and shaped it in the shape of a man or a beast or animal or something. And you overlaid it with gold and silver and you out there bound down to my this be our God. How foolish can a nation be? How could we get so far off of the beaten path? This is the, during the day of the king. This is during the day of the Old Testament. We are seeing the same thing nowadays. The likeness are the same. We just haven't cut down no statues. We haven't took trees and overlaid it with gold. We, the church, and, and, and God said you have, the 
defile the church. You have defiled your body. You have contaminated your body with sin. Bow down to Baal. Get me. Go back to uh, Manuel. You don't have a mic, do you? Uh, Cynthia, go to the chapter, Jeremiah chapter 10. Show you what Israel had did. Show you what God's people had done. And, and, and it, we see that going on today. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 says what? Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cut of a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? For to, the, for to thee doeth it appertain, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms there is none like unto thee. But they are altogether brutish and foolish, the stock is a doctrine of vanity. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarsh and gold from Euphus, the work of the workmen and, the, and of the hands of the founder. Blue and purple is their clothing. They are all the work of cunning men. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be able to abide his Indignation. Indignation. This, look, <clears throat> and you wonder what is going on in our world today. Why is all of these calamities? Why is all of these things happening? <clears throat> we that are called to be God's people, we didn't found another God. We didn't found something that mean more to us than God, than Jesus. And it's all because of, Lord have mercy, the deceitfulness of Satan. Satan himself has deceived the people. And when I'm talking about the people, I'm talking about leadership. Satan has deceived leadership by uh, 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 willingly they, they submitted to Satan because of the desires of their heart and they have taken down and they have not given us the pure word of God. They're giving us their ideology of what the Bible is saying or what they think. And God is angry. God is angry. Israel knew. They knew not to go and cut down a tree. They knew not to overlay it with gold. God told them when he brought them out of Egypt, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. And you are to serve with all your heart. You are not to bow down to any graven image. They saw God in action. Somewhere, somebody deceived them. And caused us, when I'm talking about us, I'm talking about the church as a whole, to get out of the will of God. To get away from what God requires us to do. Give, give me uh, Jeremiah the 14th chapter. Jeremiah 14 and 11. Jeremiah 14 and 11. These are the conditions. These are the conditions 
uh, uh, that, that, that got Israel in trouble, got Judah in trouble, got the nation of Israel in trouble, and I see the similarities are the same in our day and time. The similarities are the same. Verse, chapter 14 and verse 11 says what? Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye should not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you a sure peace in this place. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophet's prophecy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. These, this is what led Israel from God. The similarities are the same today. The similarities are the same today. God told Israel, you're not to bow down to any idol. You're not. All these commandments he had given them, what not to do, they went away from it. Amen. And when God sent the prophet Jeremiah to chastise them, to get them back in the right place, the false prophet stood up and told the people, this ain't going to happen. Don't worry about that. Amen. You're God's people. Mm -hmm. That's why in the seventh chapter of this same book, they, when, when God brought accusation to get them and let them know what God, they said, we, we, we the temple. Right. We God's temple. Right. God ain't going to do nothing. Somebody had deceived them. Somebody is saying, what about them in Jesus' name is not necessary. Somebody is saying the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues is not necessary. But that, the Bible said it. God declared it. The people that Peter in the day uh, 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 when they were in their sin and they found out that they had uh, uh, killed the Messiah, they said, men and brothers, what shall we do? The doors of the church was open that day. Peter told them how to get in the church. Jesus had said he was going to build him a church. Hallelujah. Why was he going to build a church when he got all these churches around Jerusalem? They had synagogues every three quarters of a mile. You couldn't travel but a, a Sabbath day journey. And the Sabbath day journey was anywhere between three quarters of a mile a mile. So they got you. You don't believe that? Go up north up in round two and you see synagogues all over there. Here it is. So listen, you'll see a synagogue. They had them in Jesus' day. They had Solomon and the Relibus temple there. Hero's temple. But Jesus said, I'm going to build me a church. Yeah. Jesus, why you want to build a church and got all these churches here? God wasn't pleased with them. Amen. God wasn't pleased. Mm -hmm. That's why on the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached that first message to the church that Jesus said he was going to build, that that church started then. That church started then. That church is the only church that, that, that the, the, the word of God is formed down to the people of God so we would know how to please God. And we've got to the point, Brother Paul, that even the apostolic are finding other ways. It's coming up with a strange doctrine. Mm -hmm. I believe that when Jeremiah asked the question, and I know he was dealing with uh, 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 neighbors and dealing with humanity when he said about not moving the landmark. Don't move the landmark. Don't change this doctrine. Don't change the teaching of the apostolic doctrine. Don't change this Acts 2 and 38. Don't change the plan of salvation that God 
has for mankind. God know what he's doing. That's the only way, that's the only method that's going to get us out of our sin. Yeah. And we want to come in and start changing stuff. Got Israel in trouble when he changed things. God says, thou shalt not. And the false prophet told him, said, oh, I don't worry about that. It ain't necessary. And it got them in trouble. Led them to worship an idol. And God was highly upset. God was highly upset. Amen. Read on. Verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets, their prophecy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, Sore and famine shall not be in this land. By sore and famine shall th those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. And they shall have none to bury them, them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. Therefore thou shalt say this word unto them, Let my eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach, and with a very grievous blow. If I go forth into the field, then behold the slain with the sword, and if I enter into the city, then behold them that are sick with famine. Yea, both the prophet and the priest go about into a land that they know not. Hast thou utterly reject Judah? Hath thou so loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us, and there is no healing for us? We look for peace, and there is no good. And for the time of healing, and behold, trouble. See, this is, this is why we need to stay in God's commandment. This is why we need to walk in God's commandment. As long as we walk in God's commandment, none of these things will come upon you. If they come upon you, they will not destroy you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. God declared that. If you're walking in my commandment, my buckle and my shield will be protecting you. And if your enemy come after you, I'll be your battle axe. Amen. I'll destroy him. I will bring him down yes. or her down. Just stay in God's commandment. Mm. Walk in God's will. You got to go somewhere and get in the closet and cry. Go there and cry. Cry boo-hoo. Boo-hoo to God then wipe your face and clean yourself up and come on back out. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss out on God's blessing. You don't want to get God in, in, with, with the idea of do what Israel had done. And God says, Jeremiah, don't even pray for him. Now, that's, that's tough. When God says, a loving God, says, don't even pray for him. What you saying, God, I done did everything I know to do to help them, and they are rebellious and a stiff neck and a hard-hearted people. The only thing is going to change them, I got to bring calamity, pestilence in the land. It's the only thing going to change them. And we got pestilence, we got sickness, folks are scared, Folks, is, 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 and it pays to be scared. It pays to be very careful. Amen. It pays. I'm telling you, God is not playing. Mm -hmm. And when God, my mother used to tell me when I was just a kid, when God move and get somewhere and be quiet. When God is moving these things, and I know it's God doing it because man can't do nothing. Man can't do a thing. I remember back here some time ago, and when I was working, and uh, 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 that I didn't know one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in Illinois. I won't call it no name, but one of the wealthiest, wealthy, well, they well known for their wealth. 
And this gentleman, it came a flood in that area that 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 I was in. I was sent out there to do some work. And this gentleman, he was out of town. He was a businessman. And I was told that this man got so much money, he don't know how much money he got. And it started raining. And it rained and it rained and it rained. And I would sit out there, go out there and see, can you help him out? See what can you do? Because his wife and the two children was left at home. And he was in some part of Asia or somewhere. And so he, 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 he called, his wife called him. And, and, and his wife called the, the city. Uh, village, and they came out there and she had water. I mean, this guy had all kind of these game, got a game room in his basement, and all kind of machines and this like you going into a little amusement game room and had five foot of water in that basement. And she called up the village and the village told us and this Ain't nothing you can do but get you a, a fifth of cognac or whatever and crawl up on your couch. So ain't nothing can be done. Ain't nothing can be done. What I'm saying is when God released his army, there's nothing man can do. When God releases them, when God sends his army out and tell them, go. How is this going to move off of the foundation? Hills going to go melting away. When God speaks, that poor woman I went over there, I, I had to take some pumps over there and I was pumping water just about all night. Mm -hmm. She left, her husband told her to go and get a hotel, go to the hotel room and take kids. So he showed up about 12 o'clock at midnight and a limo brought him home. He flew in. And he came up to me and he introduced himself. I got to take the shake of man's hand that don't know how much money he got. <laughs> but his house was flooded. <laughs> you would think that you got that kind of money. You, you shouldn't have that worry. A lot of us think, Lord, if I could just get this and I could need it, I'd be all right. Don't you believe that? You better stay with God. And what little bit God give you, be content with it. Be happy with it. As long as you got peace, be happy with it. This, this, this. And, and, and he, he was a really nice guy. He came. He came and he thanked me for coming over there and doing what I did. And then he went in his pocket. He pulled out a $100 bill and gave it to him. I said, no, sir, I'm on the payroll. I'm going to get paid. He said, I want you to have this because of what you did. You came out here and did this. I want you to have it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Look, what I'm saying, stay in God's will. Amen. I don't care how bad things get with you. Stay in God's will. Israel got out and you see what happened to them? Amen. They had no protection. They had nobody to come to their rescue. That, that, them, that, that tree that they cut down and shaped it and paid somebody to shape it into whatever they wanted to be and overlaid it with gold, he couldn't come to their aid because they had nailed it down. It couldn't even move. It couldn't see. It couldn't hear. Don't you let nothing. Don't you let no money. Don't you let no fine, handsome dude. Don't you let no gorgeous woman take you out of the will of God. Don't allow that to happen. Don't allow it to happen. Just stay with God. Money, don't let money get you out. We, 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 we got a lot of people that sold out for money. Mm -hmm. Are doing all kind of trickery things. I'm not 
talking about them and people in the world. I'm talking about church folks. I'm talking about leaders. And once a leader lets something blind them, Lord have mercy. That's why God told them, don't you take no bribes. Bribes will blind you. Bribes will get you to the point that you won't be able to, to make a, a wise decision. <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll be, you be making decisions you think is all right and is all wrong. It will blind you. It, a bribe and, and stuff and thing is just like alcohol or some type of a narcotic. It will call you to deceive you. Think you can do something that you, you can't do it. It will distort your thinking. Stay with God. Amen. Stay in God's commandment. Yes. Stay in God's commandment. Let's go back to uh, uh, the 11th chapter of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 11 and 18. And the Lord had given me knowledge of it, and I know it. Then thou showest me, then thou showest me their doings. But I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter, and I knew not that they had devised devices against me, saying, "Let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered." But O Lord of hosts, that judges righteously that ties the, the reins in the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I revealed my cause. Therefore thus saith the Lord of the men of Anathoth, that seek thy life, saying, Prophecy not in the name of the Lord, that thou die not by our hand. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword, their sons and their daughters shall die by famine. And there should be no remnant of them, for I will bring evil upon the men of Antioch, even the year of their visitation. Look, they, these people, because of Jeremiah was prophesying, Jeremiah was telling them the truth, something that was going to help them to repent and get it right with God. But these false preachers, these false teachers, he said, Jeremiah, we're going to kill you. We're going to kill you. We're going to shut your mouth. Look, if God be for me, I'm not worried about what they say. I learned that long time ago. <laughs> I learned that long time ago. If God be for me, as long as I'm standing in God's will, every, everything that come up or rise up, God said, I'll bring it down. Adam just makes sure that it is not true. My pastor told me that years ago before he died. He said, you can't stop people from saying things about you. Just make sure it's not true. And that's what I tried to do. Jeremiah was only saying what God had given him to say. And these men wanted to kill him. One of them slapped him. Now that's, that's pretty tough now. Dog on the fence slapping now. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't believe nobody would do that anyway. I'm not here tonight, now. And somebody that don't know me, what you laughing at, Meryl? <laughs> Better you know something I don't know. <laughs> but but you know, it's it's it 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 walking with God. And now sometimes I might say, well, Pastor, you make it seem like it's so easy that no, it's not an easy walk. I'm gonna I'm be honest with you, it's not an easy walk. It's gonna be some time when you you really gonna say, Lord, where are you? Why is these things happening to me? We're not immune from problems. The thing it is, when we face our problem, God is there to get us through it. 
David said, we said earlier, the Lord is my shepherd. He said he leads me to what? Green pastures. He makes sure that I'm taking care of my, I get all the nutrients. I get all the protein. I get everything that I need. He leads me to green pastures. He don't lead me to desert places. He takes me by still waters. While I'm drinking, he's standing there with his staff watching over me. Make sure nobody come up on me and try to stab me in the back. Thank you, Lord. Try to eat me. Glory. And then when I get weary, oh, <laughs> he called me to lie down and rest. <laughs> he restores my soul. Yes. When this world keep get through beating on me, when they get when when trouble get through uh, uh, whooping me and dashing me like you do a dish rag, mm -hmm. then he come and restore me. Mm -hmm. You you through crying at him? All right, get up, get back on the battlefield. He give me energy. He restored me, my spirit. He lifts me up. And he said, you know something? When corona come, when the pandemic come, when the floods come, he said, yeah, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death. Death is all around me. But he said, you just going through, Adam. Yeah, Lord Jesus. Whatever, whatever happened around you won't affect you. Amen. The pestilence that comes by night and day won't bother you. No. Behold, he that keepeth Israel. Hallelujah. That, that, that goes for me too. That goes for us too. Because we got his spirit. Mm -hmm. We are his people. Hallelujah. I tell you, it, the, 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 the benefits that we have when we keep God's commandment. I want us to get this. We've been struggling too long. God got benefits for us. And we're not getting them. We want to know what God has required of us. So we can give God what he wants. God wants holiness. God wants us to love. God wants us to, to, to have fellowship with him. Yeah. The blessings. The blessing. The benefits. That come. When we walk in God's covenant. When we keep his commandments. Israel, they wanted to destroy Jeremiah. But let me tell you something. When God has called you into holiness, mm -hmm. God's going to protect you and keep you. Yes, he will. Thank you Jesus. God won't let your foot fall. Hey. Mm -hmm. That if you call upon him. All right. When you call upon him, he won't let you fall. Now, if you want to think you can make it on your own, your, both of your foot going to slip. But if you call upon him, he will be your hand feet. You see how the mountain goats, I'm telling you how they be going up the mountain, stripping, how in the world they do that? God said, I'll take you up a mountain that <laughs> a slippery slope, I, I get you there. Because I'm going to protect you. I'm going to see out for you. Jeremiah, uh, uh, they, they wanted to kill Jeremiah. And Jeremiah uh, was so disappointed. He was so hurt. Jeremiah was so hurt that he got to the point and he was disappointed. Yes, you can't get disappointed. You can, we can go through a time of a disappointment. We can go through a time of a uh, of despair. There's a time when we feel like God has left us. Mm -hmm. 
We can't, we, we, the Job said, I, I, I went to my right, I couldn't find him. I went to my left, I couldn't find him. Where is God? Mm. <laughs> God said, I was holding, down, holding you up all the time. Mm. <laughs> That's why you couldn't find me. I'm the one was holding you. Mm. <laughs> if I hadn't been holding you, you'd have lost your mind. Mm. You'd have went crazy. Mm. You'd have did something stupid. Jeremiah said, he got so disappointed, he said, I, I said, I'm not going to speak anymore in his name. I'm not going to speak anymore. I'm going to quit telling these folk about God. But see, that, that's why it's necessary to have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Even when this old natural body want to give up the Holy Spirit down in us. It has something way of just energizing this old body, energizing this spirit, Amen. energizing it. It'll cause something to start rising up in you. Glory, glory. That, 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 no wonder uh, uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, after that you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall have what? Power. 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 Do to us. Mm. Something that is just generating power. You will never run out of power. It just keep generating. You get weary, and, and, and the Holy Ghost kick in, start generating power, keep you going. That's what. That's why it's necessary to have it. Jeremiah said, "I sit down. I said I wasn't gonna say anything in His name anymore. I wasn't gonna speak in His name." But He says, "There was something in me just like fire." <laughs> it was shut up in my bone. It would let me be at peace. It would let me be satisfied. It would let me be uh, uh, mediocre. It would let me be lukewarm. It made me where I wanted just burn for Jesus. I wanted to be on fire for God. I wanted him to use me. One writer said, use me till you use me up. This is what we, this is the attitude that we need to have. Because we're going through some testing and troubling time now. I, I, I'm telling you, I look at what's going on in our world today, and I'm just in the back of my mind, I'm saying, Lord, what's next? What is, what is going on? What, what is next? What else can happen? I mean, it's so much. Nothing good that seems coming from the world. There's fighting. That this, this, this recklessness. You can't even speak to people naked attitude. People are trouble. Hallelujah. And the reason why they're troubling, they're walking out of the commandments of God. They're walking out of the will of God. Get in God. Stay in God. Let God abide in you. Let this Holy Ghost have his way in your life. Walk by. Let the Spirit of God guide you. Let it be your comforter. Let it be your guide. Stay in. The only way you're going to do that, you got to stay in God's covenant. Stay in God's word. Stay in God's will. Amen. 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 I'm through. I'm through. We here at Lighthouse, we believe this Bible is the true word of God. We live by it. We walk by it. We try everything that we do. We try to do it by the word of God. We try to make sure that we're in the will of God. We plead, our aim is to please God. And the Bible tells us the day of Pentecost when the peoples had heard the apostolic message preached, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? How can we get to be a disciple of Christ? How can we get it straight what we have messed up? All right. Peter told them to repent. Yes, he did. Every one of you would be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ 
And God himself, the creator of the universe, the God that so loved the world, Jesus. that he gave his only begotten son, the God that made a way when our mother's father could make a way, a God that made a way when your money can't make no way. God will fill you with his spirit, the tongue, talk, and Holy Ghost. We thank you. We pray that you've been blessed by these words that came from the word of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.